The geology out here is very interesting. You got two deposition models going on at once. So, so you got the Muddy Creek formation and you have a detachment fault with a series of parallel sheeted veins over here, fissure filling veins. And so you have gold deposition coming from those two sources from multiple time periods. I've talked extensively about the Muddy Creek formation. In fact, there's been a lot of bulletins that have been written on it, bulletin 1361. But what is not talked about is the fissure filling veins structures that are out here. That's what I'm gonna show you. This is what I'm talking about. About. These are fissure filling vein structures. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a quartz vein running inside of this quartz monzonite. Quartz monzonite is in the granite family. Okay? Don't let the name fool you. It doesn't, it actually has less quartz in it than granite. So you have quartz monzonite with fracture running through it, and then you have hydrothermal fluids that have come up through. As they've come up through, of course, they drop in temperature and pressure, and then they begin to solidify and crystallize. And if there's any mineral assemblages in with that, they'll drop out of solution as well. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. See this? This is a quartz vein that was running through this rock, like I showed you earlier. It was like this. It had a small fracture in it, just enough for those hydrothermal fluids to get in there. As they came to the surface, they began to cool, the pressure and temperatures dropped, began to crystallize. You can see that I have, these actually were cubes of pyrite at one time. And you can see that all the sulfur has oxidized out. This is all weathered. And you can see some limonite in there as well. And these are referred to as pseudomorphs. It just means it's, this is pseudomorphed after whatever it was before. So if you're gonna find any gold, It'll be in this area here. We have all this limonite and all this mineralization here. Do you see that? Look at that. Oh, isn't that nice? See that? You can see all your silicon dioxide right here, all your iron. If there's gonna be any gold, it'll be associated here where the pyrite used to be. And you can see the limonite and be associated with this too. This is the other type of vein structure that's out here. That's why you got a lot of quartz out here, this bull quartz that has that iron staining on it. It's from all those pseudomorphs that are weathering away. And that's where your gold will be. Ooh, look at all that float. Ooh, let's chase it up the hill. Chasing it up the hill, baby, yeah! Oh, look at what I see. Look at that big old monker. Yeah. Look at that, even more. Ooh, a little bit of mineralization in this one. That's a good sign. There's gotta be a vein or if not several veins. It's coming from up there on top of the hill. And you can see where you've got little inclusions of iron, which used to be pyrite. See those cubes in there? Huge vein structure right here. See that? Oh yeah. Oh, we're getting closer. Look at that. That's right, it's a good place for a medley too. All right, now a lot of you out there have heard me talk about alluvial deposits as far as plaster deposition goes, but you not, haven't heard me talk a lot about alluvial deposits, which are up here on the hillsides. Now they're a little harder to find and chase, but if you find one, Oh, they can be extremely rich because that means the source is nearby. So I got this beautiful hillside here. There's tons and tons of float and there's outcroppings all over the place. And a lot of them are heavily stained with iron from the pseudomorphs. A lot of staining, red staining. And that is a good sign. This is a trumpet plant. See that? See that little bulb on the end there? That's a trumpet plant. That's why they call it a trumpet plant because it's swollen there. Anyway, they grow in heavily mineralized areas. And the old timers would look for these things because they were indicating of mineralized soil, a lot of black sand. It doesn't mean there's gold there, but it's a good place to look. Now, I've checked lots of places with these trumpet plants and it's hit and miss. So it's not a for sure thing, but if you're dry washing, instead of melee teching it, it's a good indicator and that's what I would recommend. You hear that, that trailing off, that bing, like a laser beam, hot rock. Don't even mess with it. Now, another problem is the end of these cords on the search coil. If they hit these bushes, see that? When you're swinging your detector, try not to do your pendulum swing. I've seen too many people do that. Focus on keeping that coil to the soil. I found one of the veins. Look at how heavily mineralized that quartz vein is. See it right here? It's running all through here. There's a big section of it right here. See that? There's so much iron in there. 
So this is the vein, and this is what we're looking for. You're gonna slowly grid this area off, metal detect it. If the pieces sound off and you can't see visible gold in them, break them open. If that doesn't work, then crush them down. If the ground is too hot, back off on your sensitivity. See that? The wobble pop. First thing you do, make sure you don't have any jewelry on. Lay that thing out flat. Gonna rake that area out flat. Okay, it's over here. When you're running that search coil, don't be afraid to drag it on the ground. That's what these coil covers are for. You can wear those out all day long. Trust me, if you do this right, you'll go through one of these about once a week. Now you're gonna have hot rocks that sound just like gold nugget. So you're gonna dig everything that sounds like it. And I recommend wearing gloves. You don't know what's in there. Tap, tap, tap. Just like that. Look at that monker. Can you see him? Right there. Oh yeah! Look at that monker, yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Always check your holes. And when you find targets like this, especially if they have quartz on them, they're referred to as specimens. Make sure you mark this on a map because if you grid off this area, you'll start to see patterns form. And then that will show you where the source is at. And that is what you're really looking for. All right, let's keep going up this hill and see what we can find. See that? That's Kalichi. That's an artificial bedrock out here. Cause the real bedrock is about maybe a mile down. The gold's gonna sit on top of that. It's great for VLS. These guys too, if you have the right coil, I've got the big deep seeker on there. So it might miss the smaller gold. Now we're gonna pinpoint it with the VLF. I like to set mine. See this one on the sensitivity all the way up where the black dot comes in, back off one. And then for your coil depth, deep. And then of course for your volume all the way up. And you're looking for this top guy to do wobble pop. <laughs> Watch. Yeah, that's a strong one too. See how easy it is to pinpoint that? There's this huge outcropping here, a float. See this? Right there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, baby! <laughs> oh, wrong tool, wrong tool. <laughs> Hush! All right, it's out of the hole. <laughs> oh, look, 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 look at that monker. <laughs> it's huge. Oh, it's got iron in it too. Look at that monker and quartz. Ooh, and I'm not staying out here after dark. No, oh, no, no, no. All right, so I'm gonna clean those chunks of gold up here and so you can see what they look like all bright and shining. <laughs> 